Hello, gear nerds of the internet. We're here with another review of another tube integrated stereo amplifier. This one is made by Kayan or Kayan, depending on how you like to pronounce it. I like to pronounce it Kayan. Um, this is the A55TP. Um, standard version is the A55T. This is the P because it has a built-in phono preamp, uh, moving magnet only. Um, yeah, so this guy has a little bit of an interesting story. I found this on a website called Reverb. If you're not familiar with Reverb, it is a website where you can buy um, gear, both, um, well, it started off with guitar equipment and musical equipment, and now it has branched into hi-fi gear. So you can find some hi-fi gear on there as well. And I found this on there, and it was listed as not working. Um, And it had three good tubes and one tube that looked like this. So you're looking at this tube, you're like, hey, there's something missing. Yes, it is missing all of the glass enclosure that actually creates the vacuum for the vacuum tube. It was broken. So it had three tubes which I will make magically appear right now. Ta-da! Tubes. So it had three tubes and one, this guy, broken. So I emailed the guy, or I messaged the guy on Reverb, and I said, hey, did you try swapping these, or do you know if it's just the bad tube, or is it a bad output transformer? Do you have any idea what's wrong? And his response was, I don't know what's wrong. So I made an offer um, lower than what he was asking, and it was not accepted. And then I let it sit there for about another month, thinking about this, checking up on it every now and again, and it was still available. And so I ended up making another offer, and he made a counter offer, and I made another counter offer, which he accepted. So I bought this thing knowing that it may have bought a headache, which is can be often the case when you buy uh, used tube gear or used gear at all. Sometimes you get someone else's problems, which is what I bought knowing that that's what this was. I knew it was someone's problem. They didn't want to be responsible for it. And so I said, why not? Because I'm an idiot. So. I bought this expensive headache. Um, I don't know if you know what the price of KT88s are right now. They're pretty expensive. So before I put money in the new KT88s on an amp that I might have to replace this output transformer, which would be crazy expensive, so expensive that it might not even be worth me doing, and I might have to sell this as parts, I remembered that I had this. This is a tongue sole reissue of the 6550 tube. And as you can see, it kind of looks vaguely like a KT88, but it's not. But it's close enough, and it's spec pretty much the same. So when I received this, um, there was actually still broken glass in. So in here, well, you probably can't see that. Let's... So you have these recessed. Um, these recessed parts where the uh, power tubes go. And there I found a piece of broken glass in there. Um, oh, I should go back a little bit. So when I first found this, I did some research between the time I made the first offer and the time I bought it. And I had found that the guy had originally sold it on Reverb as working, and it had 
this tube had glass on it. So I had suspected that it is probably not the output tube or the output transformer. Um, it might very well just be this, and he didn't want to buy tubes for it. Um, but it looked like it, it shipped, it got damaged in shipping, it got returned to him, and he was selling it as broken. But that didn't preclude there being an actual issue. So when I got this, I like pulled the glass out of it. And um, in moving it around, I heard something moving around in here. Um, so the tube, he shipped it with the tubes in it, which I'm guessing is what he did the first time, which broke the tubes to begin with. Um, so I pulled out all the tubes. And in doing so, I noticed that, I think it was this guy, this tube, tube number one, had the uh, the key on the bottom of the tube broken off. So let's see if we can find a good way to see the key. Uh, maybe it's easier on the black one. No, it's probably harder. But anyway, there's this little black protuberance that comes off of this plastic stem, and that will align to this cutout, which also, oh, there you go, that's better. That cutout, uh, so you have the pins lined up in the right place. So I noticed that that broke off, which isn't uncommon. It happens, and then you super glue it back on and move on with your life, or you know, maybe you don't even have to. You can just pay attention to which pins you're putting it into. I prefer to super glue them back on when they break. So I figured that's what was floating around in here. I opened it up, and immediately I saw what the, what the problem was, and it wasn't the output transformer. I will show you a picture here. It's highlighted. There's a circle around the issue. This is a motorized pot. It has uh, two wires coming off it, and one of them, as you could have seen plainly, had uh, come loose. And the reason for that is that it wasn't really making a strong mechanical connection. It was just kind of soldered on top. And so rather than actually go in there and uh, replace that wire and make a good mechanical connection because I didn't feel like soldering onto the board or splicing a wire on. I just soldered it right back on and verified that it wasn't going to fall off. I gave it a couple of tugs. I dropped in my 6550. Boom. I biased it, which... Man, for all the tube gear that uh, I've complained about it being heavy, or I complained about a CD player being heavy earlier today, that uh, there's a video for. Um, this one's way heavier than all of it. Um, so, as you can see here, there are biased trim pots. You can see it over here, kind of. I'm not going to move it so you can see that side, but it's the mirror image. Um, and there are um, junctions for, boom, your multimeter. And then you can set the bias on each tube, which is why I decided I could just try this with this in here because um, that's actually a super nice feature. So let's talk about biasing, I guess. So, Tube amplifiers have current running through them, and every tube, not every tube, but a lot of tubes, almost all tubes, have different voltages that um, they draw. Um, so when you get a matched pair of tubes, or matched quad, or a sextet of tubes, they are tested at wherever you bought them from, and they're they are all drawing the same amount of current. It's, and that current is measured in milliamps. Um, and so for these guys, um, yeah, well, let's, let's ignore that for a minute. Let me um, talk more about bias. So you can have an amp that's cathode biased, which is the bias is set by the cathode resistor. You don't have to bias anything. The other way of biasing is 
what this is is a fixed bias amp, even though you can adjust it. It's an adjustable fixed bias amp. Um, a lot of guitar amps usually have um, one bias trim pot. So this one has four. It'll have one for all of the tubes. So though in those instances, having matched tubes are critical. But in this instance, it's not critical at all. It's actually not even necessary because you set the bias to each tube individually. So it didn't matter that these three were matched and this one wasn't. I could just set the bias to that one individually and I knew it wouldn't be a problem. Yay. So I plugged it in, biased it up, turned it on and it works. So whew, my headache wasn't that bad. It took me about um, three minutes to remove the cover and solder that part on. So let's talk about Cayenne a little bit. Uh, so if you look at this thing, it might have a slight resemblance to the Prima Luna amps. And those uh, are made by the same manufacturer in China, which is why they have a uh, resemblance. Now, those are more of a premium brand. These the, the Cayennes are tend to be a little bit more of a budget amp, but it, it's still super well made. Like this is super thick uh, aluminum. I assume I don't know. It might be steel, but I think it's aluminum. It's got to be aluminum. Looks like aluminum. All this is metal. It has a triode and ultra linear switch. Which what that does is it changes the amount of the power tubes that it uses. Um, ultra linear uses the entire tube. Uh, triode uses these. Um, this is normally a pentode. I have this wrong. Please yell at me in the comments. I think this is right. I haven't really thought about tube stuff like this in a long time. These are pentodes. It kind of dumbs it down to a triode. So it's less efficient. You'll lose um, you'll lose some of your gain, so it won't be as loud. You'll lose some of the bass, some of the high end, but it kind of makes everything a little bit smoother. Whereas in ultra linear, it um, does not do that. It is the full tube. The um, as a selector switch for aux 2, aux 1, CD, and the phono. And then it also has, which is super nice, like I alluded to, this is a um, mechanical volume knob, which means it has a remote, which is super cool. It doesn't have an on-off switch. It has a triode ultra linear switch. You can change the input, you can mute it, and volume up, volume down. This thing is made out of metal. It is substantial. Um, I don't know how you put the batteries in. I guess you'd probably take that off and put batteries in there. Batteries work, so I don't have to worry about that for the current future. My kids are running like elephants. Yay. Um, so it has that. In terms of tubes, this guy, I guess, shipped for with EL34s, and that's based on the manual. I read the manual, and it gave bi to figure out the bias on these, um, and it gave a bias for uh, EL34s, uh, which I can show you through the magic of television. So here's a EL34. As you can see, it's much smaller a tube than the KT88. This happens to be an EL34 branded uh, Mesa Boogie, which I believe this looks like an Electro Harmonics EL34. Almost paused. I'd be shocked if that's not what this was. Um, so these are the tubes that I believe this amp shipped with. Um, so I reached out to, there's a, an American company that does the distribution for these guys. Uh, VAS is the name of it. 
and I asked, like, is it even safe to run these KT88s in here? Um, and if so, what should I be biasing them to? And so he responded to, if it had KT88s in it, it's probably fine. Um, so and I, he said that it should be biased. Uh, the, the EL34 should be biased to 35 uh, milliamps, and these should be biased for 40 milliamps. So that's what I biased it to. Um, then I tried it, and it sounded pretty good. So I ordered a quad of Mullard, Mullard KT88s. This box is empty. I'm not treating these things poorly on purpose. Um, so I could try out in here, and I dropped them in. And oh, by the way. Thanks to a war, these things are now impossible to find and super expensive. Glad I bought them when I did. Um, what was I saying? So I, I popped them in, set it to 40, and I thought it sounded okay. I tried swapping out the preamp tubes. These are 12AX7s. These are 12AU7s. Uh, if you think about, like, the gain spectrum on one of these preamp tubes, the AX7s are like 100% of that. The AU7s, I believe, are like 60% of that gain amount. So these, I would assume, are your main input, feeds the input, and then these are probably um, phase inversion and maybe a final uh, input stage. I don't know. And so I got a decent sound, but I didn't love it. I wasn't really blown away by it at all. And then I dropped in some EL34s that I had laying around and biased it for 34, or 35 rather. And I actually liked the sound more with the EL34s than with the KT88s, which I was shocked by. So what you get with a smaller tube is usually a lot less bass, um, much more pronounced mid-range, um, and depending on the type of EL34, your highs might be a little bit, uh, a little bit extended comparatively. Um, and this tends to be more of a balanced tube with a bit more bass. I found with the, the EL34s that I didn't lose that much bass, but I uh, I enjoyed the mid-range a lot more, um, which I found really interesting. So I think what I'm going to do is when I sell this, I'm going to sell it with the EL34s in it because I think it sounds the best. Um, if I do sell it, I'm pretty sure I'm going to sell it. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but... Let's talk about some of the things I don't love about this guy. The um, What's weird to me is that, so as you can see, it says TR, UL. So TR for triode, UL for ultra linear. It defaults to when you turn it on to triode mode. So if you don't have this, or you lose this, or you break this, you are forever in... Um, triode mode, which shouldn't be the default. I, d I wouldn't think that that would be the default. Man, well, maybe people really love triode mode. I think it's okay. It could be fun for certain genres of music, but I wouldn't want to always listen to it. Um, and then what else don't I like about it? I don't know. It looks beautiful. It's a beautiful, well-built uh, amplifier. I don't have a lot of complaints about it at all in terms of build quality. I should show you the back, I guess. You know, it's nothing. Here's your, your photo and then a, a ground for your photo. So, uh, and then you have your inputs, you have a tape out, and then you have 
your speaker routes, and then your you have some hair on it. I have a dog that sheds a lot. Um, and then you have, you know, your AC input. Nothing, nothing special back there. So this is the version one of this. So the newer version of this, the, the Mark II, I guess, is how the guy from VAS said. It actually has a switch on the bottom to go back to the tubes because I keep floating away from those and coming back to them. I'm going to turn this back around. So what was I saying? Oh, so on the bottom of the Mark II version of this guy, it has uh, a switch to switch between EL34 and KT88s. I don't know that that's necessary, at least on this one, because you could, there's a heck of a sweep on the bias pots where you can go from super low to super high without it really breaking a sweat. I don't, um, normally those switches will kind of change the, um, the sweep of the, the bias pot. It'll go from a lower range to a higher range or vice versa. So you could tune it in better, uh, set your bias easier. Um, but I, I don't know that that's necessary at all for this guy. Um, I think so. Let me try to turn this on. Does that make it nicer, maybe? Maybe. Ooh, maybe that's better. Um, so one of the things I don't like about this, now that I'm thinking about things I don't like about this, is when you put you take your multimeter and you plug it in. You really have to jam this in to make a good connection to actually get a proper reading. Otherwise, it'll read like next to zero when you think that your thing is broken. Um, but it, it's not. It's just, you just got to push it in kind of hard. And then it's a little weird. I don't know. Maybe you could see this. Hold on. Let me get, let me get my pad back where it should be. Let's do it. Um, so once you have these guys plugged in, positive and negative, it doesn't give you a whole lot of working room to get a screwdriver in there. Um, so that's kind of a pain in the butt, but those are, you know, minimal sort of complaints about this thing. It, otherwise it works pretty well and easily. Um, what else? What else? Oh, so here's an interesting thing. More nerdy um, tube bias talk is I plugged in, I have a, um, a bias probe for tubes similar to this where it'll tell you your volt, your, um, your idle current, and it'll also show you the plate voltage, so you know where to um, where to set your bias. So you can do the, the equation, um, and based on seventy percent plate dissipation. So basically, this at a hundred you know, um, hundred percent plate. Plate dissipation. Plate dissipation. You're using. You're getting. Uh, so these are 35 watts. So you're getting 35 watts out of it. But you're also running the tube really hard, which is going to kill the tube faster. You don't want to do that. It's also not going to sound very good. Uh, so with guitar amps, you usually go like 70. With audio amps, you don't want it to distort, um, and you don't want it. I mean, you run it harder with a guitar amp because you're going to crank the volume and you want that really sweet, sustainy um, tube breakup. On this, you don't want tube breakup. So I would think you would want it like around 60% plate dissipation. 
so I did I did it for seventy, and then the the uh, the bias to get to seventy percent was like fifty five ish. So I would think like for sixty, it would be more like fifty ma, not the forty ma that they suggest. But I didn't bother trying it. But I would think that that is a more reasonable bias setting for these guys. I don't know if the 40 is because um, the power transformer on these can't handle more. I don't think that would be the case. I mean, it's not drastically different. It, we're talking, you know, 10 MA more. It shouldn't be a problem. And I think maybe you'd get a better sound out of it that way. But who knows? I just thought that was interesting that uh, it seems way under biased for the KT88s. The EL34s is like right at 60% um, in that vicinity at least, whereas these is not at all. It's probably around like 50 or maybe even lower. I didn't, re I didn't do the math on the 60%. I probably should. Let me do it now. One second. The formula is something like 70% times the max dissipation divided by the plate voltage, something like that. I don't know. I'll, I'll put it up over here, what the actual, um, what the actual formula is, and I'll, I'll give you the, the, what it actually suggests, the formula would suggest for these things to be uh, biased to. And I, I guarantee it's not 40. It's probably closer to 50. Um, and then I can also figure out what what percentage of plate dissipation uh, 40MA is, and uh, I'll put that up here once I do this. We'll, we'll fix it in post, as people say that say stuff like that. Uh, I didn't try this on my son's system, who has a moving magnet uh, turntable, because I was lazy. Maybe I'll do that. Um, maybe I'll make a follow-up. But I've gotten to the point now where I've come to the conclusion, and I think this might be the last tube integrated amp that I buy. And I think I have come to the end of my tube, at least my power amp tube journey. Uh, I just don't find that paying for the exorbitant prices of these type of tubes is worth it. Um, you could, on the low side, for four of these, pay $200 for these tubes. Um, if you're biasing at 40 MA on this amp, they should last a long time, probably, you know, they'll, they'll last years of, of, of listening assuming that they don't go bad just due to mechanical failure. 200 bucks to every two one of these things, even if it's every couple of years, is kind of more than I want to put into it. Um, so what I went from this, I went back to the Noobson preamp and the, the Vidar. I did miss some of the, I'm not going to lie, I missed some of that mid-range sound. That mid-range sound was pretty sweet. Um, but... Do I miss it enough to pay two hundred dollars every couple of months or not months every couple of years to retube it? And now, I mean, that's with prices as of a couple months ago. Now that new sensor tubes, which are the people who make Sovtech tubes, they make electroharmonics tubes, they make these Muller reissue tubes, they make these tongue sole reissue tubes, they make the Genelix. Uh, Gold Lion reissue tubes. They make the Svetlana. I guess they're not really reissue tubes because they started making those while Svetlana was still making tubes. They just kind of stole their name or whatever. Um, you know, those tubes are all, you're not going to be able to find those, at least until this war is straightened out and all of the uh, sanctions are lifted that you can actually import stuff like that. So. For all, which, which, admittedly, that's not the only people who make tubes, but there's only two other places that make tubes. They're JJ 
makes their own tubes, and those are in the Czech Republic, I believe, which is pretty close to Russia. Um, so it's not impossible to think that something happens with this war where you also can import those tubes, which would also be bad for people uh, with project stuff who want to buy project stuff because that would make that inaccessible. And then um, Chinese tubes will, will still be available. The, the problem is New Sensor makes so many different types of tubes that there's so many different flavors of them that um, they cater to a little bit more of everybody. Like JJ's are great, but they have a sound that you either like or you don't like. There are tubes that I... I mean, in my guitar amps, I love the Electro Harmonics EL34s. I've tried two different types of the JJs. They're okay. And if I couldn't get the e, uh, Electro Harmonics ones, I would be fine with those. But they're not my preferred tube. I find that JJ makes really great GZ34 rectifier tubes. And there are other two... Uh, they're the rectifier. Their rectifier tubes are good. Their EO84 tubes are the best that I've tried. I haven't tried like the Genelix reissue tubes. Um, those might be good. I think Muller, they may also have like a Mullard version of them. I haven't heard those, but I've heard the um, the Sovtex and I've heard the electroharmonics ones and those don't sound nearly as good as the jj's um the chinese tubes tend to sound pretty good but like the preamp tubes definitely have a sound that you either like or you don't like and that those tend to be kind of boring neutral nothing to write home about and their power tubes i think tend to sound really great the only problem is that they don't last long so you end up replacing them uh twice as fast as any other tube that i found but like all of their tubes that i've ever tried were great the their el34s are great they have a bigger bottle so you get more bass which could be a negative with the guitar amps um but with hi-fi it's probably good their 6l6s are good their uh, kt88s are good you just have to worry about construction quality I mean, I guess, you, you know, someone will say, well, yeah, they're all, all, all of the construction quality of any of these tubes are not as good as they were when they were making tubes in, you know, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, to whatever they were, degree they were still making tubes in the 80s in the U.S. or Germany or the U.K., which is true, I guess. But, I mean, they're better than the Chinese tubes. The t Chinese tubes are not well made. They don't last very long. So I think this is going to be the last, which I say that and then it probably won't be. This might be the last review I ever do for an amp with power tubes. At least, you know, tube stereo. Because I think what I'm going to start looking at now are different uh, tube preamps and maybe different power amps and playing with... Uh, with that stuff a little more and just kind of forget about about this because i think that this even if it sounds a little bit better i would like to pay less ultimately and i don't want to have have to pay for new power tubes when they become worn down because they're they're consumable and two hundred dollars for a consumable that's a little rough for me and granted i have a moving coil cartridge at the, which is essentially consumable you can get it retipped but it still costs a couple hundred bucks usually so it's you're still paying but i think the difference is less between a two power amp and a solid state power amp than a moving coil cartridge um and a moving magnet cartridge. I think that there's a bigger difference there between those than with these. Um, and maybe I'm wrong. And 200 bucks is for these guys pre pre Russian conflict. Now, like these, I bought these, and I don't even know what they go for now. They're uh, 400 dollars, so double what I paid for them last week. It's crazy to think where, you know, where is it going to be in the future? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I think this is it for power tubes for me. Sounds great.
but not great enough. Uh, so, you know, but you do you. Let me know if you think I'm crazy to give up on all tube stereos. Um, it's funny because the only reason I got into hi-fi was the guy who is my tube tech for my or my amp tech for my tube uh, tube guitar amplifiers was what happened to be working on a 300B based stereo that he was working on building from scratch in his basement. And I'm like, hey, what's that over there? He's like, that's a tube stereo. I'm like, what does that sound like? And he put, had a little Sony, I don't even know if it was a Sony, like a Discman portable CD player. He plugged it in to these crappy Radio Shack from the 70s speakers. He pressed play and out came this music that I had never heard before. Um, yeah, it was Paul Simon's Graceland. I've heard that before. It wasn't that. It was the way that it sounded was just incredible. It was ethereal. It had uh, it had dimensions in the music that I had never heard before. And I said, uh, that's what I want. I want to hear that. Because at that point, I had a little garbage system that cost maybe $200. Um, like a, you know, all-in-one sort of system they used to sell back then. And I, um, I started down the, the road of hi-fi. And I've had, I don't know, maybe a dozen dozen all tube um, stereo amplifiers I started I bought an Ico ST 40 I think that's uh, an old one that I rehabbed um, I looked at every I took it readings of every resistor every capacitor I replaced all of the electrolytic capacitors and I got I did the loudness mod, I did all kinds of stuff to that thing, and I used that for years, and then what I had found is that vintage, uh, talk about buying a headache, vintage gear is a constant headache, something is always going to go wrong with it, because everything is super old, especially on that thing, that thing was, you know, 40 years old at the time, and everything was just constantly going wrong with that thing, so I got rid of it, and I started buying other stuff, and blah, blah, blah you know, multiple tube stereos have come to the end of the road, I think. And um, and maybe it's just a special synergy between that noob sound and that Vidar that I'm just like, yeah, this is really good. Um, yeah, I think I'm done. I mean, this thing really sounds great. Like I said, there's a thing in the mid-range that this does that that doesn't do. But... That VIDAR will just go and go until it stops working, and this, this will need maintenance that that one doesn't. So, someone else can enjoy this. It's very enjoyable. All right, have a good day.